obey God, he will promise you such a promise, stupid promise, like gold and silver in heaven. What is the value of gold and silver? Actually, I don't like it, gold and silver. A beautiful tree is better than all the gold in the world. Imagine you have a mountain of gold. You are sitting on it, but you don't have a piece of a bread. What we will do with gold and silver in heaven? What kind of God he promised me that my house in heaven is made one brick of gold and one brick of silver? That is Satan. Satan always, he have a tool of temptation. And all of us, we knew. The Bible have tons of verses about the tool of temptation, which is always concentrate money, sex, power. And they are connected. The one who got the money, he seeks sexness. The one who got money, he got the power. Satan always have one way to prove himself to us. He tempt you physically with gold and silver and power, authority, sex. He tempt the women by men. He tempt the men by women. It's not a secret. And this is exactly the same method of the stupid Muhammad. When his men, they want to go to war, what he promised them? Holiness? No. He says, Dahman, Dahman, you will F the women like this. Is that a speech of a prophet? When he wanted to attack the Roman, he says, attack the Roman so we can get the yellow girls, the yellow. They don't even know how to use the word blonde. They call them Asfar, Banatul Asfar. A savage man, a gang, even his followers accused him. After they attacked their neighbors, their families actually, their cousins, they attacked them and they stole their underwears. And then the, the gang of Muhammad, the campaign of Muhammad, they accused Muhammad that he stole a piece of a cloth. You ask yourself what an honorable person he is to the point his own followers accused him that he stole a piece of a clothing. I don't want to compare between the disciple of the Messiah and the Messiah and the faithy Muhammad because that will be insult to the most holy person ever. Mankind so that is the Messiah. But imagine if the disciple of Jesus accusing Jesus that he stole a piece of clothing. What is that going to tell you? What will tell you is that such a group cannot be ethical because if their best, if their best person is suspected of being a thief by his best companions, are you, are you with me? Because who is the one is accusing him that he stole? The Muslims, the companions. Not the Muslims like at that time, they are not a million. They are just a few. The very few Muslims who support Muhammad, they supported him because they are thieves. And now the thieves are fighting over the theft. Who stole this piece of clothing? And here you need to ask yourself, I mean, what kind of of people they are to the point they are not even fighting over gold or silver it's just a piece of a clothing how savage they are how trashy they never saw such a clothing nice trashy garbage so they accuse their best man the one who sent by Allah that he stole and look how the Muslims the false translation of this verse. No prophet could ever be false in his trust. What trust? What false trust? What are you talking about? An yaghul in Arabic it says, which means to be a thief. Change the translator. Never take a Muslim translation. Muslim translation is just a fraud. And look, look here, they try to cover it too. It is not of any profit to take illegally a part of the booty. Look, 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 see, 
They are trying to cover it. They don't say it's not for a profit to be a thief. What take illegally? I mean, it's a booty anyway, which means it's a theft. They stole it from their neighbors, and now they are fighting about what they stole. And actually, this verse proved to us that Muhammad and his God both are liars. Why? Because if they accuse Muhammad that he stole a piece of a clothing, what about Allah? He tell us who is the one who took it, and that will solve the problem. Which means this verse confirmed that the one who took it is Muhammad. Can't Allah, don't Allah knew? Who took it? Instead of saying, it's not Muhammad who took it, tell us who took it. And that will be really good. I mean, Allah supposedly is a God and he can see everything. And now this is the time you can show us that you know everything. What the Quran says, confirm two things that Allah do not know. Or Muhammad is the one who took it. He can't accuse anyone else because then we go to his house, he have nothing. It is in the house of Muhammad. Otherwise, Allah, if he is God, he should say, go to the house of a Christian prince, open the drawer in the bedroom, the third drawer in the left, in, you know, yeah, go there, you will see it. Huh? And you will notice all the translations try to avoid what the word Yagul mean Yagul mean thief only if you have garbage friends they will accuse you and you are the best of them to be a thief that means you are a thief and they are thieves do and as you see they are fighting over the booty which is nothing but a theft they took it unjustly. You know, in the Middle East we say, tell me who is your friends, I will tell you who you are. You want to know somebody, see who goes out with who? What kind of people he associate with? If they are drug dealers, they will be a drug dealer. If they are gays and lesbian, he will be like them. If they are, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, preachers, he will be a preacher. I mean, why he associate with them? If they are, if they are dancers, he will be like like dancing, obviously. So tell me who is your friends. I will tell you who you are. And let us look at the friends of Muhammad and the friends of the Messiah, if we can call them friends. And they will see, we cannot even see, we cannot say even the word different. Different mean nothing actually. The compare here is hilarious. And right away you will find that Muhammad is nothing but the biggest scam ever come to this earth. And those people, they are not only deceived, they are lying to themselves. All what they need to do, just open your books for five minutes, read your book, and you will see that your prophet is nothing but a scumbag. I mean, name one thing about this man is not evil and ugly. Sex with his children, sex with his own son wife, sex with the maid when the, the, the wife she was away. And there is nowhere in the Quran giving him license to have sex with the maid. The Quran give him a, a, approval to rape women who they are captive of war. Fighting over the booties, accused of theft. Telling his son to keep his wife when he just came from the house flirting with the wife. If his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her so the prophet can F her. All those description and many more is in the Quran. The best of the booty have to go to Muhammad. The fifth of the booty have to go to Muhammad. Muhammad do not need to pay dowry if you want to sleep with the women. It's for free. Muhammad, no woman can after him sleep with other man. It's he on her. Muslim woman, she can, if her husband pass away, she can go and marry. No, Muhammad, he own you until you die. He is above even his own religion. Muhammad have his own rules, which is no rules. All the Muslims have rules. Muslim can have four wives. Muhammad, there's no limit. 
Muslim have to pay dowry if they want to rent a woman for sex. Muhammad, he take it for free. A Muslim is not allowed to go to the house of somebody and if he like her, take the wife. Muhammad, he can. And the man should give his wife immediately as we showed you in Al-Qurtubi, the privilege number 10th. So always cult leaders, they share one thing. They want your money, your wife, and to be their slave. And that is exactly who is Muhammad. He used the name of his God to control them, but he is their God. Allah is just a tool to fool the Abdul. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. This is your brother Christian Prince who is serving you humbly for today. Don't forget to download the videos because soon I'm going to do a cleaning to my channel so we can keep it clean from the name of Muhammad. Take care.